Hello and welcome to part 5 where we're going to start working with our compute shader. To start with, we will create a reference to our compute shader. So at the top of the create GUI method, we will type in shader equals asset database dot load asset at path and it will be a type of compute shader. get the path for our compute shader we will go back into unity and in our scripts folder we have our alpha edit compute shader where we will just right click and copy the path then go back to our script and insert that path in between the quotation marks next we will go to our alpha methods region and inside our apply alpha gradient method we will remove this line of code and we will instead insert this code and we will now implement these missing methods by pressing alt enter and then create method So, in this first section, we'll be creating a new texture, which we will assign to output texture, which has the same dimensions as selected texture. Then, depending on the option we choose from the alpha dropdown menu, we will call a method which will augment our selected texture, which we'll assign to output texture. Then finally, our new augmented texture will be displayed in our image preview of our editor. Next we will implement our alpha hole method. We'll begin by deleting this line and inserting these two lines of code where we create a value called alpha which is equivalent to the percentage of our alpha slider value. Then we pass it as a parameter to our text opacity method, which will return a texture 2D. So let's implement this missing method by pressing Alt Enter and create method. Let's create a new region underneath. We'll call it compute shader methods. And we'll move this text opacity method into that region. Let's save this. Next, let's open our alpha edit script, which can be found inside our scripts folder. Let's start by deleting the comments which come with the default shader. Next, we'll delete the code which is inside CS main. And then we'll rename CS main to alpha hole. And we'll also rename it at the top. In the top line of code, this pragma section, it is simply stating that a method called alpha hole exists in this shader. Next we'll create some additional properties. So we'll create an RW texture 2D of float4. Which we will call input. Next, we'll create a float for named tint and a float named opacity. Then we will input the following one line of code as a method body for alpha hole. 
which is stating that for every pixel in our input texture, we are multiplying the alpha channel, which is W, by our opacity. Then we are multiplying the color value of that pixel, which is represented by a float 4, by our tint, which is another float 4. Unity's color class is similar to a float 4, as it contains four float values, which defines a color. Let's save this and return to our image alpha editor script. We'll start implementing this text opacity method by removing this not implemented exception. Then we'll insert the following code to start with. First, we create an integer variable named kernel handle. We then assign it a value by using the find kernel method and pass it a string parameter, which is the name of the method we are searching for, which is alpha hole. Next, we create a new texture 2D called selected text, which has the same dimensions as selected texture. Following that, we create two render textures which we will pass through to our shader. The result text will contain the resultant texture of our shader method, and input text will be the texture we supply to our shader method which will have its opacity and tint multiplied. This input text will either be the basic custom width and height texture we create, or the texture we select to load in the texture object field. Next, we'll insert the remaining code to finish off the method. In this section of code, we are setting input text as the active render texture. We are then using the graphics.blip method to copy the source texture, which is selected texture, to our render texture input text. It might actually not be necessary to set input text as the active render texture, since we specify input text as the destination texture, but I've left that there just in case. Then we're using the shader.setTexture method to assign our input text to the input texture property that exists in our compute shader. We then set our active render texture to be result text, which is required and then assign with the set texture method our result text to be the result texture property of our compute shader. We then also set the opacity to be the alpha percentage float we pass to the text opacity method and set the float floor property called tint with the set vector method where tint.value is the value of the current color that is selected in our editor window's color field. We then call the dispatch method, where we set the amount of thread groups to be equivalent to their respective width and height divided by eight, which is the value of the num threads for our alpha hole method in our compute shader. This will actually cause us a little problem that we will rectify later. Lastly, we are using the readPixels method to set the pixels to be that of our current active render texture, which is result text. We apply those pixel changes, set our active render texture to null, and then return selected text. So let's save this code and go into Unity. Now what we need to do is make sure that we are using a compatible graphics API for our compute shader to work. I'll show you what happens if we don't have a compatible graphics API set. If I enter the alpha editor and I choose create texture, something weird like this may occur. 
remedy this, we'll go into project settings and in the rendering section of other settings, since I'm using Windows, I'll turn off Auto Graphics API for Windows. And it appeared that my current graphics API of Direct3D 11 isn't compatible for the compute shader. So instead, I'm going to add Vulkan in and make that the priority. And I'll restart my editor. If you're using a Mac, you should be using the Metal API. As for Windows, I recommend Vulkan or DirectX 12. However, it is currently experimental. So just choose the one which works for you. So now when we open up the alpha editor and we create a texture, it'll come out black. So to remedy this, we'll open up UI Builder. And for the color field, I'm going to set the default value to white. Save this. Now we'll open up the alpha editor and we should have a white texture. And if we set a color, it'll set the color of that texture. However, we have this gap space here and also at the top. And this is because our compute shader num threads is set to 8. However, we are setting a a size of 100 by 100, which isn't easily divisible by 8. So if we set this to 80 by 80, we create the texture, it'll work fine. And if I load a texture, so set this to that, you can see this also is fine for applying the tint, as well as the transparency. However, we do something like set the width to 7 and the height to 7, which is, isn't really going to be a real texture size, but We'll have this error where the thread group size must be above zero. So we're going to fix that problem now. We'll go back into our script. And above our text opacity method, we'll add this new method. In this method, set run count, it takes in a parameter of an integer, which is the dimension size, which could be either the width or the height and we create a variable called count, which we assign to dimension size divided by eight, which is our num threads. Now, if our dimension size doesn't cleanly divide by eight, which we can find out by using the modulus operator, whereby if dimension size modulo eight returns a remainder, then obviously it isn't cleanly divisible. So what we'll do is increment the count by 1, and then we'll return that count. So we will use this new method to substitute the values we put in the dispatch method. Then instead of this, we will put in set run count, and it will be result text dot width, and here will be set run count result text dot height. Let's save this and go back to Unity. 
Now when we open our editor and we put in the same weird dimensions of 7x7, seven seven, we still achieve creating the texture. And if we do 107 by 107, see we won't have these gaps which may have appeared before. For this next section, I'm just going to show you the performance gain we got by creating our compute shader. So it's completely optional for you to follow this part if you want to see for yourself. I'll start by just commenting out this and instead substitute it with this. So instead of offloading the work to the GPU, we are instead using the CPU to iterate through every pixel in the texture and then multiplying its color by the opacity and the tint. So I'll save this and we'll look at it in Unity. Now I'll create a texture. So for a small texture, it might seem very inconsequential. So you can still scrub through the colors quite fine at a moderate pace. However, if we do something larger, like let's create a texture by 2000 by 1000, you'll find that things have started to drastically slow down. I can't actually scrub through, change color. However, if I go back to the code and just comment that out, and I restore this line, we'll open the editor again and we'll create that same dimension of 2000 by 1000. Uh, but this time, I can just scrub normally through it. And there is very little slowdown. I mean, you can optimize them all for how many threads you want to send through to the GPU. But it's not like anybody's going to keep on scrubbing through this until they find, like, a unique color. Okay, and that rounds off this video. In our next video, we're going to implement our gradient shader. So I'll see you then. Peace.